Big news, guys. My new project car, C8 Corvette. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. This thing is so cool. So we're actually at Magnuson Superchargers, and I'm really excited because we are installing a supercharger kit on my wide-body Toyota Tundra. So I, I first started working with Magnuson a couple years ago during the shutdown. Everybody was at home tinkering on their cars, and I actually installed a Magnuson supercharger on my FJ. It's still supercharged. I still take it to the desert. I use it to chase off-road racing. It is so much fun. It makes all the good noises. But now our other off-road vehicle will have just as many noises, but a lot more horse purrs. <laughs> a lot more, <laughs> yeah. a heck of a lot more. Yeah. You're gonna have fun with those 37s for sure. So um, the, the thing is, this wide body, yep. while it performs great off-road and it's good in terms of like how it looks, it is so much slower than stock. Oh, it is a lot slower. Once you go with those bigger tires, even with re-gear helps a lot. Re-gear helps a heck of a lot, but the thing that helps the most is a blower. With that said, it's gonna be so nice to actually put the supercharger on, yep. and we're actually gonna do it today, but we have everything laid out here. We have all the hoses, we have all of these hard lines, hard lines here. Reroute, yep. Yep. Oh, so spark new plugs. spark plugs yep. and injectors, mm -hmm. just like on the FJ. Yep, and we gotta do a fuel pump in this one. So, um, like for the FJ, it actually comes with a fuel pump inside the tank, but I actually did an external Supra pump. Pump on it. Yes, just yep. because, uh, you know, we're, we're going off-road all the time. We're going to Mexico. Yep. I don't want the fuel pump or the fuel filter to clog. That's yeah. all internal. So we actually took that out. So with my quick math, um, I think it comes stock 390. Somewhere. Something in, like that. So yeah, somewhere and in then, there. So with exhaust, who knows? Maybe it'll get to about 550 That's, crank. Yep. That's what I'm hoping for. 550 crank is kind of where we want to be and kind of the, the happy spot. So the thing about Magnuson is I've actually had a chance to drive um, Toyota trucks before with Magnuson superchargers, but they were actually branded as TRD superchargers. So yep. these guys actually did the TRD superchargers in-house, including for this original, or, or not this generation, but, but the, the previous, previous generation. generation. We did the blower for, we did it for um, the Tacomas as well. We actually have a shop Tacoma that's got a blower on. So just about everything we have, we do, but we did create those for, for those generations. Yeah, and that kind of says a lot in terms of reliability, you know, because uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you can actually order those from the, from the dealership at you one can. point. You can, yeah. At right? one point you were able to order them from the dealership um, and be able to purchase that. And they they would uh, install a blower for you in the dealership if that's what you wanted, which was also the really nice thing about it. So you'd have some customers that buy a 4Runner. Next thing you know, they're like, oh, well, I heard there's a supercharger for it. You go into the dealer and you were able to purchase one through them, which they would purchase it from us and we'd ship it out to, to whatever dealership purchased it. Yeah, and then on top of that, one of the things that a lot of people ask about is a warranty. There actually is an engine warranty, right? Yeah, three year, 36,000 mile uh, powertrain warranty. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, okay, so uh, let's dig into it. Where's the actual supercharger? It's gonna be right over here. Your blower is sitting here lonely <laughs> by itself. It is. But it's actually really big. It is. If you try to pick it up, you should see how heavy it is too. So how much heavier is that over your uh, oh your Forerunner? Yeah, or the, yeah, the the, uh, the, the FJ, FJ one. Yeah, the FJ the one. The FJ one. I was playing like a horn, yeah. you know, because it was so light. Uh huh. But this one is uh, it's some serious volume. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is a lot of volume for sure. This huh. thing's gonna scream and sound awesome. All right, let's take a let's take it out of the plastic and we'll talk yep, about it. Yep, we'll take it, it over yeah. there to the table. Whoa. So I'm looking at the instructions yep. and it says. Installation instructions for the 2007 yep. 
plus mm -hmm. 5.7 liter. What's crazy is this is this will pretty much apply to all the even up to the 2021 trucks. Yes, exactly with the V8. Yep. So the one that we did, uh, we do have, there's a different set of instructions for a flex fuel, but that one's not carb legal. Nice thing about this kit, it's carb legal. So you're able to throw this blower on, have fun, do everything you wanna do, and then when you're ready to go get a smog, you can go up, pay your 50, $60, whatever it is, and go ahead on your way. Yeah, so for those of you guys who are outside of California, you don't have to <laughs> worry about carb. Carb is California Air Resource Board and they're very strict when it comes to emissions. But the cool thing is this doesn't pollute any more than the, the stock truck. It is very efficient and it's also um, eco-friendly, I guess. <laughs> it's gonna, in, in a way. <laughs> in a way, yeah. yeah. For, but for us, honestly, it's gonna be really helpful because we use this to tow a lot. And with that extra power, it's gonna be so nice to be able to tow. All right, so <laughs> let's check out the actual blower. Got the blower right here. What a unit. So you do you know how many liters this thing is? Oh, uh, one point, probably like 1.9, somewhere in there. I have to double check. I believe it's mm -hmm. even, I believe it's more, but um, I'll get more of that specification yeah, no and stuff for all the viewers for sure um, to get you guys the most info that we can on all of these. This is so crazy. It can we take yeah. a look at the um, side of it? Uh, yeah. So this replaces the, the stock intake manifold. Yep, and that's the nice thing about our kits is that I, there's obviously more to the install, but you take your stock intake manifold off and I can almost fit just about everything in a box like that. And you go home with a box as your intake manifold, a couple other pipes, gaskets and stuff. Um, and you're good to go. Do you have to take this apart? No. I remember in the FJ, you actually had to take <laughs> You had to take the lid off. Right. Yeah, so you'd have to take the lid off on that. On these, we don't. It's crazy how little resistance there yeah. really is. With the bearings, everything in there, I know. It is so smooth. It is. I mean, look at this. You could just spin this and it makes that noise. <laughs> right there, like that. Right? <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, but this is the unit that will go in there. So this is all um, this piece is cast and mm -hmm. all of this stuff is CNC'd. Yep. And then the blower itself is a Eaton yeah, unit? Yeah, the rotors inside are Eaton. Okay. Yep. The we'll rotors to... inside are? Yes. And then a lot, all this stuff that you guys make in house? Mm -hmm. or all of this? Yeah, a lot of this we make in house. Some parts we get out from outside resource, but all the machining and everything comes in here. We finish everything. We actually have a really intense uh, machining process on where so many, before we even get these, so many of these batches need to be uh, measured at certain points. I mean, the inside of holes, the diameter of the rotors. I mean, we'll show you guys later on with a tour of some of the machines that we use to do this process. And the nice thing about this is once every supercharger is done, we have three testing rooms. So it goes in there, it gets tested, and we know that the unit is good for you to throw on your blower. And we spin it at several different boost levels we're able, able to kind of mess around with that. Um, so we spin it a lot farther than most of our customers ever would. Got it. Cool. All right. Now it's time. Let's, let's get to it because it. Uh, the more we talk, the more time it's going to take. And Izzy here is enjoying his breakfast. He's going to help us uh, install this supercharger. <laughs> I should probably have my breakfast too. Okay, while well, I've been rudely on calls all morning, yep, Noel's been just chugging away. I've needed help so many times and you weren't here, yeah. so I don't even know if I want to talk to you right now. <laughs> uh, just talk to the hand. Um, <laughs> so we have um, the throttle body off, the intake manifold is about to come off, yep. and that's when we're able to do the injectors, yep. do what, what else needs so to be replaced? So we'll do injectors. We have a bunch of coolant reroute that we'll have to do down here. Some new lines, uh, new inlet and outlet housing that'll go right here that we make. Um, <laughs> and just getting everything prepared to be able to handle the blower. Um, we'll get all that stuff prepped. That usually takes a little bit more time, but this thing's gonna look freaking badass. And then, so before you started all this, you actually had to download 
the software off of the ECU, yes. which is, you basically had to download the tune. Yeah, the stock so tune? Yep, the stock tune. We take off, um, do the calibration and everything. We get it onto RTD device, send that over to calibration. We'll go ahead and make a tune and unlock everything for you. And then once we get that back, then that's an updated tune. Once we have the blower to handle the injectors and all the other upgraded things that we have in there. And who do you actually send the stock tune to? <laughs> so we have a second facility um, in Michigan and we send it out to them and they go ahead and handle all the tuning to, uh, side of it and calibration side of it. Um, they'll take that file and then um, update it with your new file for this, com this specific computer and everything for your vehicle and you'll be good to go. Yeah, and part of it is because even though all the Toyota Tundras are similar, they potentially could have a different tune or a different ECU. Yes, exactly. From year uh, to year. Exactly, but it's mainly just getting into your computer and being able to get in there and upload a new file is just getting through it being locked. Um, in order to do that, we obviously have to get all the information out, send it to them, it'll uh, come back, unlock it, tune it, and then you'll be locked again. So cool. Stock. Intake manifold. Off. Off and in the trash. Uh, look how much dust it is. It's just leaking dust right now. Let's go compare it to your motor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Put this right here. Huh. Yep, that's a big difference. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. We're going to check out the facility already through this little window here. I've been looking and I see just rows and rows and rows of superchargers. So many horsepower making devices in one place. <laughs> All right, so while Noel and Izzy are working on the truck, we're actually going to take a little tour of the facility. We got Todd here. He is the director of sales. Yep. Right? So uh, let's check it out. This is kind of where the magic happens. Right. You guys your inlets. either make a lot of that stuff in-house or you outsource some of this right. stuff. Right, all in-house. Oh, mean, all this stuff is in-house. Yeah, it's, I mean, it might be, it's coming out of a foundry, you know, mm -hmm. casting. But yes, once it comes in, machine work is done all in-house. And, and it's Plus designed. you guys design it in-house right. in California. California yeah. or Michigan, because mm -hmm. we have uh, an engineering group in Michigan as well. So this is where we bring you know, our, our raw castings and our components that we, you know, we have to source. Um, and we bring them in to do our quality checks here um, to make sure that everything meets our standards and our specifications before we start into the assembly or final machining process. So most of what comes in here is maybe had a single pass rough machining first um, group, and then we're gonna get into the depths of the machining process in house. So we have to make sure that um, all, the, all the castings, all the critical measurements are on point. We've got a full CMM machine in that room there. It's got this huge granite oh, slab oh, in there oh. and it's a computer measurement. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so we can com put a component on it like this and mm -hmm. measure all the critical aspects mm -hmm. um, to make sure it's it's where it needs to be. And then we do that. So once we go into the actual final machining process, so that's a machined unit, so we're checking it after. So we're confirming what we're doing is is on target for what the what the program is stating. So then once this is measured and done, then you can cast this? Well, or? so in this case, the tech will go back to the machine group and say like, hey, you guys are where you need to be. Mm. You know, go ahead and machine 100 of them. Got it, got so it. So we're double checking our work here. How long have you guys been in California? Uh, 50, 50 plus years. I, we were in a different location than Ventura early, early on, but uh, Magnuson's been here for well into the 40 year mark, 50 years overall. You guys do pretty much everything out of just this one building in terms of like inventory, shipping, development, like uh, this place and also your Michigan yep. facility. Yep. But it, it's crazy that you guys are able to do this in Southern California. But um, also another thing is the fact that you guys are selling these kits that are California legal. A big customer base is in California. Huge, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, we all know the vehicle park in California is tremendous. 
it's a double-edged sword, you know, working within the, the most critically regulated state in the country comes with some trade-offs, but in the same way, it, 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 strength, it strengthens you and you learn how to build a product that is not only really efficient and makes good power, but also responsible. And I know like in our industry, there's a segment that's like, hey, I don't care about that, but it's part of how we're going to survive. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we want to keep doing this. So these are the actual Eaton rotors ready to go. They're all individually serialized. Oh. So when they come from Eaton, like. Wow, that's how it comes. And then you guys yeah, have to build so we the build rest there. So surrounding this, is, this yeah, thing. So this is a little 900. Mm -hmm. um, this has been open and shown around, but you can see it comes from Eaton like this on its bearings. It's fully timed for us. And that's just, you know. That is just so cool. Yeah, and th this is an abradable coating. So I don't know if you guys have talked about that at all, but this microscopically kind of looks like a fluffy popcorn under, under a microscope. And because we, we test run every single supercharger before we box it up. Mm. So when you first run this, the rotors intermesh and make a, f a fingerprint from one rotor to the other, and it'll actually just blow off a little bit of this coating, and that's what gives us such a really good, efficient seal. Mm. You, you know, you know, like- It's like, it's touching. Right, it's sealing. the abradable t coating actually touches and then you run it in and it makes a perfect match. This really shows how much you guys have to do in terms of development. Yeah. Like start from this, this is the and building get block. it in the car yeah. and, and make it run. So that's a 900. Oh, whoa. And this will show you how it compares to like a, like a 23, which is just a little bit larger than the 19 that's going into your Tundra. Yeah, so that gives you a size difference between the two. That is, so what is actually making that whining sound that we all love? It's, it's actually the gear set. It's just the gears? It's mostly the gears. That's the bulk of it. Just the, the uneducated guess for me would, was thinking that it was actually the air getting compressed. I mean, yeah, no, that's not the whine. That, really? That, that, there's an element to the sound that comes from the air, but it's the wine is typically coming from the gear set. And then the reason why it's getting louder and quieter is because the throttle is opening. The speed and of the gears moving, yeah. And the speed of the gears. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You learn something new every day. <laughs> Aside from the power aspect of it, the sound is the coolest part. Right. You know, it, that's, that's, that, that's the thing. And, and it's so funny that it's such a byproduct. Like, it's something that you guys probably don't even really think about. It's, you know, you do hear sometimes, like on, on, the, on the Toyota products, like on the new 3.5 for the Tacoma, you'll have folks that are like, wow, it's really quiet. I wish I could hear it more. And it's like, it is part of the efficiency of the rotating group. Eaton is an OEM manufacturer. So when they build something for the OEMs, they're dealing with very strict MVH requirements. You know, so OEs don't want a lot of progression into the cabin space. My FJ, when it ran the stock air box, it was actually pretty quiet. Yes. But as soon as I put an intake on it, oh my God, yes, it's loud. Yeah, and it I is. I love it. Yeah. It sounds so good. Yeah. You understand why we stick with the OEM intake, of though, course. right? It's, it, it helps with the emissions. Yeah. That's the cool thing about it. It's up to the end user, you know? Yeah. They, if they want to run a smaller pulley or if they want to do this, that, and the other, exhaust, intake, whatever they can. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah, so this is a this is a cart full of VMP components getting ready to get built. You you saw some of the housings over there. These are the nose cones, rotating group, intercooler assemblies are lined up. So the, it's just waiting in queue to go to one of the assembly group, to one of the assembly stations. They'll finish it out and then like this cart, it's, these are each waiting to go into the test room. So they'll be strapped to a bench. They'll be attached to an electric motor and then they'll be ran in on a sequence cycle uh, at different RPMs to make sure everything is operating as it should. And right. then it goes into a to box. To check, and I'm sure that it's boosting within spec and right. stuff. Right, yep. So we, 
that's a that's a costly step to take every single unit and do that. We you know we could say hey let's do one out of ten, and it would it would save us some labor and some time, but we don't shortcut it. That's the thing is um, a lot of people probably ask why is it that these things are so expensive? Well, you get what you pay for. Yeah. I mean you're asking a lot. Um, out of w what you guys are doing in terms of like development, in terms of research, making sure it works, like you said. And it's for so many different applications. Um, it's not just your weekend race car that you're putting it on. No. You know, it's something that you can drive every day and that's the cool thing right. about it. A tremendous amount of our customers buy it for daily use, whether they're towing or whether they're a contractor or whether they just want more power. But, you know, daily use durability is really, really important. Those are the folks that they, they can't go out to their garage and have a problem. They're going to work. This cannot be further from getting a couple bits from eBay, yeah. slapping it on, putting together your own turbo kit yeah, and no. calling it a day. This is so beyond that. This is, in fact, I would say OEM quality or higher than OEM yeah. quality. Well, and you yeah. know, I mean, I think you're aware of the, the tie into Toyota back in the day with the OEM side. So it's, uh, the OEM level is a whole different game as far as what they expect. And they can't have comebacks. They can't have vehicles spit in the bit two years out of, out of the door. Whoa, that is a big motor. That thing is huge. That is so cool. That it's taking like fresh air from up top yep. and running it through there. Through. That's at 12 hertz. Yeah, so it's running at 12 hertz. So you, like, so you can see for this unit, the test is one minute at 53 hertz, 38 to 12, 20. That one's a pretty loud unit too, huh? So when you're testing it, uh -huh. are you running it potentially more RPM than what a car can do? Um, for certain units we are, like, like a lot of our units are making seven, eight pounds of boost max. That one's 12. Whoa! So that's how loud they'll get. Oh my God, it's, it's screaming now. Whoa, so that's... That's the dial, huh? Yeah, so the he's, speed dial. Yeah, so he's, he's adjusting just, the speed. Yep. So he's at That's 53 hertz now. Whoa. So. So he's running. He's running this cycle for one minute. That, that is so crazy. So then he'll drop it to this for another minute. That is really loud. Yeah. Like you need ear protection. Exactly. Oh my god. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So no. then, so then, this is definitely running more boost than a car could spin it. Yeah, I mean, we're 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 pushing it. And then part of that is, does it break in from this? Yeah. Well, yeah. So that that initial foot fingerprint is happening in this okay. cycle. I mean, very quickly. Wow. But it allows us to know that hey, what we're putting in the box is, that is ready so to cool. go. Oh my God, so that is really loud. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's getting louder. It's getting louder. And then now it's like, oh my there God. There it is. Yeah. You feel like you're at the that dentist so now, cool. right, Larry? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> so yeah, so we've got some, so just to kind of show you some of the other areas, this is additional, this is additional um, assembly area, just depending on the overall workload. So these are some of our Magnums for the uh, LT platform. These are really popular units, really making a space are for Are these the the, themselves. some of the biggest ones that you these guys are, make? Yeah, these guys are all running the 2650 rotating group, which and is- Is that the biggest, like- uh, it's, um, it's the largest that's currently in production. Mm. Eaton did just um, at SEMA announce the 3.1, the 3100 series, and we're in uh, development on those. But again, we got to do everything that we want it to do before we start putting it into a finished yeah. unit. At how many liters is the one that's going in the Tundra today? So it's 1.9. Got it. That's what you're getting now, but you know more is coming for Oh it. yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> 
Cool. So Very yeah, cool. so just, I mean, it's, it's a lot of, oh, here's some C8 parts. Okay. So what's unique to the C8 is the upper lid is all billet. Oh. So it's a little something different. We usually don't do billet. Obviously there's a, there's a expense to billet and there's a, there's an expense on the production side too, you know? So not only it's, it's more costly than casting. It also takes more time, but it's a great looking piece. It allows us to get our, a really, really nice sized um, cold, cold uh, charge air cooler in there, which is, you know what that is, right? That's what the water passes through. The heat shoves through it and it takes the heat out before it hits the combustion chambers. So the charge air cooler packaging is really critical. And this fits both the coupe and the hardtop convertible, which is critical. I, I really like it. I kind of feel like it matches the status of the C8. Yeah. It being like um, the supercar killer, you know? But this is just super it's cool. It's the next level. Yeah, right? it, it is the next yeah. level. All right, last thing I wanted to talk to you about is the dyno room. You guys actually have your own in-ground dyno. Yes. Which I'm sure is very useful for you guys to develop stuff. Oh yeah. But um, I see there's a beautiful C8 here. C8R actually. Yeah. We, that, uh, uh, does it already have a blower on it? Oh no. No, no. this is soon. Uh, soon to be. Soon to be. Yeah, soon the, to be supercharged. So. Is this going to be one of the first ones? It's gonna be one of the first. We've, we've had a handful, but uh, it's gonna be one of the first built out of this facility, mm. so. That's, gr that's great because you can actually test yeah, the oh horsepower yes. figures. You know, I'm guessing you guys probably already did the baseline yep, dyno numbers. Baseline and, and, then, uh, and then the install. So, so is this the first kit where you actually have to drop the entire motor? It is. How much power are you guys expecting to make over stock? So it's, it's about two over stock. So it'll put it in the low 600 range at the wheel and right at 700 at the crank. So it's no... Yeah, that is crazy. It's no slouch. That is insane. Yeah, and the torque is just massive. All right, and then this is this is the uh, yeah, actual so this, dyno room. So yes. you actually have a. So we have an engine dyno as well. Oh. Yeah. So um, that is that is so fancy. Yeah. I love that. So right now we don't have anything on it, but we've got this engine dyno. In Ventura, and then we have uh, at our sister facility in Michigan, we have uh, a dyno cell there, and we have a supercharger engine test stand that's really crazy there because of these like really high output superchargers. You saw the how we test mm -hmm. on the electric motor stand. Well, we're getting to the point where we can't get a big enough electric motor and we can't get enough energy into a building to push them to their limits. So when we're doing like really hardcore engineering and we're looking to find the outer limits, we didn't have enough to, to push it. So at our Michigan facility, we actually built our own test bench. So it's got a bench where you put the supercharger on it, okay? And instead of an electric motor, it's a supercharged LT4 driving. <laughs> Running a supercharger. Yes. So it's a supercharged LT4 pushing a huge flywheel that then pushes the test unit. No way. Yeah, it's crazy. Like <laughs> that sound you heard is nothing. That is so to. cool. Yeah. That is definitely something I want to see. All right, well, thanks for the tour. We're actually going to dig back into the Tundra install. Um, but yeah, so much cool stuff that I learned today. Um, yeah, I cannot wait to drive this thing. Okay, pretty much everything is prepped and ready to go. We got the injectors out. We got new spark plugs in. We got the water pipe set up, all of that. And it's pretty much ready to drop in. So this blower is pretty heavy. So you can't actually pick it up. I mean, I guess you can if you're strong enough and drop it in, but there's a risk of you actually damaging it or chipping it or whatever, destroying the gasket. It's not really worth it. It's better just to use a cherry picker to actually place it on gently. There it goes. There it goes. 
Oh ho ho! The eagle has landed. Dude, look at this. It makes everything else look so old and dirty, but it's just because we actually use this vehicle for serious off-roading. Now it's about to get a lot more serious. This is gonna be so much better for towing, but honestly, just general off-roading, going up big hills, going up dunes. It's just gonna be so much better. Who needs a re-gear? This thing is gonna be <laughs> insane. Look at this. So, from what the guys have told me, basically, when it's, when the valve is open for it to just free spin, it only takes about half a horsepower to actually spin it. So there's really not that much parasitic loss when you're idling or going slow. But as soon as you go wide open throttle, it takes about 100 horsepower just to turn this blower at full tilt, which means it has to make 100 on top of the 100 to 180 that it's going to make on, with this motor setup. So yeah, for it to push 550 to the crank from the stock 381, it is a lot, so it's moving a lot more air. So cool. So now, officially, I only have one naturally aspirated vehicle in the fleet. The 350Z is the only one that is NA. Everything else is forced induction, which is just so crazy. I just love boost, I guess. Something about it. There's just so much going on here. <laughs> yeah. What the? That's what I was telling you, the magnet cycle. This yeah, is magnet insane. Cycle is one of 10. Uh, Jerry actually made this back in the uh, late 70s. And it was a kit for, I think, $800. Um, what the? Based around a Harley, right? Based around a Harley engine, and it's a lower center of gravity. And when he was working for Dan Gurney, he showed it to Dan. And Dan actually created the alligator motorcycle using this as a reference. And... Uh, it's a nice center, lower center of gravity, but the oil tank is actually in the That's my favorite part. in the in the um, mounting right. bracket for the engine, in part of the frame. This is okay. So this is like the history wall. Yeah, huh? the history wall. So you've got all the uh, the blowers, the two lobe blowers from what the seventies. This is this is from the seventies and eighties. Yeah. Oh, all these were the their first editions were the Harleys, and. Um, it was kind of a, the test bed for Jerry because he was drag racing. He was testing, you know, superchargers and um, different things at altitude in, in Colorado. Mm. And then when Dan Gurney brought him over here in 68 to work with um, uh, AAR, it was really kind of Jerry's opportunity to come to California and make his mark. So he worked with Gurney for two years doing frame and suspension for his Indy cars. But on the side, he was doing blowers. And it was for Harleys, and then led up to a contract with Toyota and Eaton. Yeah. Yo, that is something else. Yeah, because of its history with these old ones, mm -hmm. when Eaton was developing this supercharger for the Ford Super Coupe, the Thunderbird SC, uh, they reached out to him to get you know consulting work and help on it, and he said, "Sure, I'll help you. I'll consult. I'll help you out. Um, here's what I've done in the past. Here's what works. Here's what doesn't." So they worked together to to really develop the supercharger. And he said, in return, what I'd like to do is be able to be the sole um, authorized remanufacturer of these. So if Ford's gonna make 50,000 of these, I wanna be able to repair you know, 40,000 of them when it's time. They said, sure. So he was able to purchase the Eaton rotating group inside of here, uh, not only for remanufacture, but also for the, for the automotive aftermarket. So he said, okay, I'm gonna be repairing them and then I'm gonna design my own. And that's that's where you're gonna see is the progression on this wall is now that he's got, he's the only one that can buy the heart of the blower, the rotors from Eaton, he's gonna design all these other things because he knows how. And that progressed into, you know, you've got a generic supercharger here, which could go on a Ford or Chrysler or GM. And then he got into the integrated designs, which started kind of like this, where it's a kind of a Lego kit where it's all bolted together. Mm. And then a fully integrated where it's, it's, it's a bespoke, casting 
specifically for this one, the Toyota 3.4 um, 5 5 VZ motor, something like that. Don't right. quote me on that. And this is out of like <laughs> the previous generation Tacoma. Yep. Right. Yep. So I had a chance to drive one with this on it. Yep. And uh, yeah. that was super cool. Yeah. So that's first gen Tacoma, that one, this one. Mm -hmm. um, and we're still making that today. So we this still one. we still produce this unit today. Yep. Wow. This and one, this is this, this is, is the first version, and then they went to fully integrated casting here. It's the second. This version. is some exactly like what I have on yep. my FJ. So that's this that's this for the for your FJ and the second gen Tacomas, the 4.0s, mm. the one GR, and um, yeah, we designed that in conjunction well for TRD, but um, the product was obviously with them. They did the tuning on it and. That was around 2007, 2008 when that came out. We're still making those today. I, I think that's super cool that even though it was started with TRD, you guys are still able to produce it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cavalier. <laughs> yeah. Toyota Matrix? Yes. Yes. No way. So this is for that. It was a 1.8 liter. 1.8. Yep. You got yeah. it. Yep. And um, this thing revved to the moon, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So this was when I started Magnus in 2002. This is what they were working on. So I came in and did a couple little brackets for this kit. Mm. But um, yeah, this one, this one was interesting. I don't know if they had all the full tuning power that they do on their current, uh, the Tundras and the Tacomas. But um, so it didn't, it didn't sell as many as a Tundra as a Tacoma. But uh, and this, th these cars were all out of Jerry's collection, or are they? Yeah, he started uh, actually amassing a bunch of uh, project cars when he was moving to this facility. So then Jerry built this shop? Uh... In 2010, we set it up as a hobby shop. He knew he wanted to have a gallery space, a lunchroom for his friends, um, and then his office where he actually would do all the hand drawings. Uh, everything he did was not computer related, it was all hand done. He would hand it off to us, we would put it in the CAD, make the parts, machine tolerance, whatever we needed to do, and then uh, build the cars. So it was all done here in this hobby shop. And then, so you've been working here since then? Correct. And it's, we had a continuation of the company, uh, Trackmaster, to do the steering systems, to do the air intake systems, to make accessories. Um, it really was kind of a, a legacy for him. Um, but we're just keeping the shop right now for the cars, maintaining the sort of uh, visibility mm -hmm. for Magnuson and when people come by just like yourself yeah uh, checking it out here we go day two truck is already up in the air Noel has been working all morning of course Izzy and I are a little later but uh, a couple things the supercharger and the supercharger cooler all that stuff is already in thanks to Noel's hard work they did have a chance to start the truck just to make sure that it works but right now the big thing is the fuel tank actually needs to be taken down because it's going to need a lot more fuel and then this is an upgraded fuel pump that actually comes with the kit okay so this is the upgraded fuel pump here that is supplied with the kit it is also a denso unit so Toyota OEM supplier that's super cool we checked out the spark plugs for a vehicle that has about 50,000 miles it's actually not that bad they look pretty normal nothing crazy not one stands out over the other which is uh, really good news the k and intake unfortunately we can't use that anymore because the diameter of the pipe is actually too small and then what it's doing is the airspeed in the actual intake is too fast for the mass airflow sensor to read so they actually increase the diameter and then they have their own like oem looking air box but it's actually a lot bigger diameter so the volume of air is going to be so much more What's actually cool about it is they kind of have like this uh, intake venturi kind of thing that goes into where the stock air comes in. I actually blocked all that off uh, when we were running the AM intake because I was actually worried about too much sand and water going into that hole. 
So what we'll actually do eventually, I think we'll actually use a snorkel, not because we're going through water or anything. I want to just put a snorkel there just so we're getting clean air instead of all of that um, dust and water and stuff. Let's get a let's get an update from Noel. Just disconnecting some of the lines, breather line, and we'll take the skid plate off and slowly start lowering it down. Disconnecting some of the uh, some some stuff off the top hat on top of it, and then get this thing down. Luckily, you brought it with a little bit less than a quarter tank, so it won't be too bad to deal with once we get it uh, onto uh, jack right here, and then we'll put it on the cart and start taking it apart and put a new fuel pump in that. Yeah, hopefully it won't be too bad. This is the larger tank, so this is 32 gallons. Yeah. So in that case, uh, I think I'll take a 15 and then you can pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It might crush me, like the weight of that thing, I might just collapse because of how heavy it is. So not not too far now. Besides the upgraded fuel pump, what else is left after this? That's it. That's it. You're done. You're good to go. Wow. I did everything else. <laughs> tune tune is loaded in. Everything is loaded in, yep. so we just have to start it up and do a burnout. Uh, essentially, this thing's only got a quarter tank. Uh, of course, typical battery lying to me. <laughs> okay, so this is a fill neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the the pump is here. Yep. So oh. we'll hold that out right now. Got it. Oh, that's a lot of sand. <laughs> Yeah, look at all that grime and stuff that's in the tank. I guess the pre-filter kind of picks all that stuff up and it's all in there. Pretty crazy. There you go. Whoa. There's a lot of grime and stuff there too. Yeah. You can see all that getting caught by your filter. Yeah. When's the last time you change it? Never. <laughs> Dude, this thing is so sick. So cool. I'm so excited about it. I can't wait. I can't wait. All right, Noel has the honors of turning it on for the first time. Damn, start it up right away. So sick. So all the air going into the engine is coming from this hole right here. All right, just had to bleed it real quick. Got some decals on it, looking good. Now it finally performs the way it looks. But this is this is kind of like my vision finally completed. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted. A Raptor competitor and I think that's kind of what we've built here <laughs> You know, it's funny. It's pretty quiet still right now, but I bet you when you're on load. Oh when you're on load. Yeah Oh. Okay, all right we've Got the beep boops Dan no laptop. Danger to manifold yep. Complete stop. What? Complete stop. <laughs> Ready? Oh my god. This is crazy. Wow. It's <laughs> so fast. It's too much. Come on, come I on. I love it. Can't tell me you don't love that. Oh my the god. Beans. You just smoke some, dude. Yo, you can't even. You, you can't How's the even. sound? How do you like the sound? It sounds crazy. <laughs> That's great. I love that. So cool. A lot of you guys have been commenting and asking, is it worth it? 
Well, it's either this or you do a complete engine swap. I don't know what else there is to do. I mean, you could do like a custom turbo setup or nitrous, but to have it on tap all the time, there's just nothing like it. The sound is so good too. Wow. Smiles for miles. Lots, lots of smiles for yes, miles. Smiles for miles are definite. Yeah, and now we're going to load up the trailer. We're gonna put the Supra on it. We're actually gonna tow it all the way back. Tomorrow, I'll probably put about 200 miles on it just to test it out, test it out. Hey, thanks for watching. If you wanna support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.